In this video I'm going to start a new NetBeans project and I'm also going to demonstrate the different variable types that we've talked about in a previous video. First of all I come into NetBeans, I start it up after I've installed it. Uh, yours will look a little different than mine because I have a few previous projects, but nonetheless to start a new project I say File and New Project. We're going to call this a Java application and I'm going to say Vehicles. Now pay careful attention to uh, this project location and project folder, that's where our project is actually going to be stored. Now create main class, you see vehicles.vehicles. .vehicles. That means this is where our program is going to start. This is going to give us a very special method called public static void main. I'm going to call this one vehicles.driver. You can leave yours at the default depending on what you're doing. For me I'm going to call it vehicles.driver. Now the vehicles that you see here is what we're going to call a package name. In other words, it's a folder. Many times a package name will be a domain name in reverse. It could be uh, edu.uc.jonesbr.vehicles because that makes it unique. Uh, that, that, in other words, edu.uc is owned by the University of Cincinnati. Within the University of Cincinnati, my Bearcat ID is jonesbr. So this is unique to me and then vehicles is another identifier within that. So uh, I'll leave mine like this. You can, or I'll leave mine as I have it here. You can leave yours as it is. I feel a little more comfortable giving it uh, a more distinct package name. So then I choose finish and take a look. It has started a new class for me called driver and the class called driver has a method called main. This method is very special just because it's the first method that is going to run. I can certainly make another method if I want to, and that's probably a good idea because we don't want to put everything into one method. So let's say I'm going to have a method where I'm going to prompt the user for information. Uh, outside of the method that already exists, but inside the scope of the class, I can declare a new method. So I can say public static void prompt user. Don't worry about what all these words mean just yet. We know that's a method signature. We might not know what each of the words, what they're going to give us, but just know that we have a method signature and this method signature has a block. Take a look up above. We have a method signature and this method signature has a block. If you notice, there's a little difference between these two signatures. One has a parameter variable. The other does not. A method can have zero parameter variables, it can have one, it can have many, uh, it can have quite a few. So parameter variable is not mandatory. If you're not going to have one, just have open and close paren. But if you do have a, a parameter variable, it goes within those parentheses. So let's start with that. Uh, now this is where we're going to do all the activities that a driver will do with a car. We also need to have a car. Uh, so I'm going to right click on my package, uh, which you see here, kind of the cubes and the edu.uc.jonesbr.vehicles that you might remember from earlier. And I'm going to say new Java class. So this one I'm going to call vehicle. I could call it car, C-A-R. I tend to not call it car just because that sounds a lot like car, C-H-A-R, which is character. So we'll go ahead and call this one vehicle. And then I'm going to choose finish. Okay, we have a class called vehicle. Now remember what our blocks are. Remember that this area is no man's land and anything below the closed curly of the class is also no man's land. The area within the class is where we can declare attributes. So I'll declare a couple of attributes here. I'm going to start with double gallons of gas. So what do we have? We have a type and we have a name and that's how we declare a variable. Now I can also make int miles per gallon, or we could just make that MPG if we wish, either way is fine. So now I have two different variables. If I want to make them available outside of this class, I can make a series of methods which are called getter and setter, or in other words, accessor and mutator methods. The good thing is NetBeans knows about this and it gives an easy way for me to do this. So I right click, I refactor, and I say encapsulate fields. Encapsulate, by the way, is one of the four pillars of object-oriented programming. Uh, encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and polymorphism. I wouldn't expect you to know what those are just yet, but don't worry, we'll have an opportunity to look through those this semester. So nonetheless, encapsulate fields, I click on all four of the checkboxes here, 
and I choose refactor. And take a look, it generated some methods for me. So what do we have here? A parameter variable, don't we? This is a method that could be called from outside of our class into this class, and it would pass in a value for gallons of gas. Now this parameter variable, gallons of gas, is getting assigned to the attribute, which you see is green, where the parameter variable is black. So it's getting assigned to the attribute, gallons of gas, here. So we've seen here, we've seen an attribute field member variable, which is these up here. It can go by any one of those three words. We've seen a parameter variable. The only one we have left is a variable that's within a method. So I'll go to this prompt user method, and I might say something like uh, int, let's say, we'll say int mpg equals, uh, let's say, 25 miles per gallon. We might say double gallons of gas equals maybe 10 gallons of gas. Okay, so uh, now we might have int distance equals, uh, maybe we want to take a trip that is 50 miles. Okay. So uh, we have some variables here that are essentially local variables because they're only alive within this prompt user method. Now let's continue this example just a little bit more and let's figure out how many miles of gas, gas will be, uh, sorry, how many gallons of gas will be left after we take this car a distance of 50 miles. So for that we'll say, okay, we'll say int, or we'll make it double, double, gallons consumed equals distance divided by uh, mpg. Okay, so what do we have here? Some kind of equation. We're taking the distance, which is 50, we're dividing it by the miles per gallon, which is 20. So if I said 50 divided by, uh, 20, 25 rather, 50 divided by 25 would equal 2, wouldn't it? And that's not a line of code, I just want to type that up so we can see it. So gallons consumed should be two gallons given this equation. Now what I can do is I can say gallons of gas equals gallons of gas minus gallons consumed. Now careful here because you notice that um, a gallons of gas equals gallons of gas minus gallons consumed. If you're a mathematician, it looks like we're saying that these two are equal, but that's not the case. In the Java programming language, a single, equals, a single equal sign means assignment. It means perform whatever is happening on the right, take the result of that, and assign that to the variable that's on the left. That could just be a static value, as we see up here, but it could also be an equation, as we see down here. Now, we can provide some output to the user. We can say SOUT tab, which will give us system out print line, and we'll say gas consumed, and then we can say a little plus and say gallons consumed. And then we can say plus, and then here, let me put a little space in here. And then we'll say gallons remaining. And then we'll say plus uh, gallons of gas. Now, once again, we're using this plus operator and you might think we're adding things together, but notice that I have some alphanumeric characters enclosed in quotes here, which is what we'll call a string. In the Java programming language, if you have a string and then a plus, it doesn't actually add things together mathematically. It just appends what's on the right of the plus to what's on the left of the plus and makes an even bigger string. In this operation, think of the plus like being glue or tape that's just taping everything together. Now, we're almost done, but one more thing. If I run this program right now, we're going to be very disappointed with the output because there's not going to be any. I can right click on my main class, which is the one with the main method and the one with this green arrow, and I can choose run and nothing's going to happen. It's going to be pretty boring. That's because the main method isn't doing anything. Remember, a method is like a phone. If I call you, I dial your phone number. Now, if I have you in my contacts list, your phone number is in my phone. But that doesn't mean our phones are one and the same. It means that I can call you. So think of this method signature like a phone number. And think of another method as your phone. So if I'm in the main method and I want to call the prompt user method, I just have to dial the number. In this case, it's fairly simple. I say prompt user. We're not prompting the user for anything yet, but we at least will get this line of output. 
So we'll run the program again one more time, but one thing I do want to say, right now this program is entirely what you see here in the class driver. We're not accessing vehicle yet. You can probably get an idea of how we will access vehicle, but at this moment we're not touching vehicle. I just wanted to show how we could create some attributes and some uh, methods as well. So I go back to driver and we see it's calling prompt user, making a method call. It's going to run these lines and then it's going to give us this output. When we run in NetBeans, we'll see the output down at the bottom here. Let's run and see what we get. So gas consumed 2.0, gallons remaining 8.0. Hopefully that makes sense because we started with 10 gallons of gas, what we initialized the gallons of gas variable to. We did a little mathematical equation here. That said 50 divided by 25 is 2. 2 is our gas consumed. You see gallons consumed. You see that variable is declared on line 27, then used on line 28, and printed on line 29. And then on line 28, we are decreasing the gallons of gas by the number of the gallons of gas that were consumed, and we're printing that out here. So that's a look at variable declaration and some simple math and output and just a quick look at methods. One other thing that's ideal is we really should get in the habit of Java docking our methods and say prompt the user for information about trips and MPG, miles per gallon. We should also do, put some Java doc above our class itself and say this represents a driver of a vehicle. After that, we're off to a good start. Much more to go here, and that's what we're going to get to explore this semester. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.